Hey, B-Siders. Welcome to another episode of Bravo for the B-Side. This is Jim. This is Danny. And uh, we are on with uh, two fantastic uh, filmmakers, writer and director and actor. Um, we have Liam Matheson and we have David Ryan Keith. And we are going to talk Hello. about the Redwood Massacre. Hello, gentlemen. Hi. Hello. All the way from Scotland. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> this is our farthest away interview. Absolutely. And, you know, hopefully it'll, the pause isn't so bad. So hopefully it'll, mm -hmm. it'll maintain that. Um, Cause we had a call to Alaska, which shouldn't be real far. And we had like mm -hmm. that six second lunar landing pause, which makes flow mm -hmm. conversation a little difficult. Yeah. But, all right. Uh, let's jump in. So. We did an episode, which is uh, the one currently airing as we're doing this interview. Yeah. Uh, the Redwood Massacre. Awesome. And uh, anyone who's who's listened to the episode knows that we were just delighted about uh, everything about it. Um, let's let's talk about its origin. Let's start there. What what brought this to mind? Well, you can you you can bring this one up because this is an easy one for you. <laughs> we um we had made a previous movie. Um, we made a, a film called Attack of the Herbals, and we made this to be a horror comedy. Um, and we had this great idea in mind, and the uh, the the film came out, and the marketing company put it out as a cross between Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz. And for us, that is saying like that set the bar way too high. So people are watching it, going, "Oh, I can't wait for this to be amazing." And people were like, this is terrible. And <laughs> one of the biggest criticisms was that it was like a, it was a horror film. It was a horror film, but it was more comedy. So we had this discussion about this um, previous short film we made called Evil in the Hills. Mm -hmm. And Evil in the Hills essentially is the Redwood Massacre. And it was a short 20 minute movie that starred me, typically. And it was completely silent. There was no dialogue in it whatsoever. Um, but we shot this um, film in 2007. And what we ended up talking about was, okay, well, let's make a horror film that's purely mm. horror. Mm. Let's go down, let's go down all this typical, let's tick all the boxes of horror and let's make it as violent and as gory and make it 80s style, you know, with a big bad guy and let's just go for it. And we ended up like coming up with this idea that was based on our older short film and it what came out was The Redwood Massacre. Mm -hmm. And plus... For for distribution, it was like a kind of educated guess. We knew that the horror market is the easiest to break into for low budget movies. So mm -hmm. we knew if we did the slasher had a bad guy on the cover, a nice, a cool name, the horror the horror community are more forgiven, and there's a I would say there's a better chance that they will give a movie like this, a, you know, a watch. So that, it was all that kind of stuff we learned from the disaster of the first film. Yes. That's <laughs> But although the horror community is very been very accepting of this movie, but yeah. the uh, the tree the tree community who complain there's no redwood trees in this movie. So. <laughs> oh man, the so horror comedy. Now mm -hmm. that's that's an interesting place to target a, a even for a short film because uh, we've written a a. We, we started as kind of a horror with some like dark humor and we actually mm -hmm. shifted it around to go for like full on comedy approach while, you know, giving blood and gore, things like that. And yeah. it is risky because some people love it, but some people, I don't know what they expect. You know, it's like yeah. anything other than uh, hacking and slashing makes it hard. Is that the general feel? that that uh, you've run into since making that? I mean, have you talked to anybody? Well, who's... well <clears throat> you know, the, the way they, they didn't know how to market our first film, <clears throat> so they tried a bit of both. And the film wasn't, I mean, the film was super low budget anyway, but the way they marketed it set it up for such a huge fail anyway. Yeah, the, the, the thing is that the <clears throat> film is like, we say it's a low budget. It was maybe a tenth of the budget of the Redwood Massacre, which was low budget anyway. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so yeah, you're right. It was the way that it was marketed. It was it was definitely like the trailer was more comedy, and then the poster was slightly horror, and it just it was just it was a, it was a horrible experience. Because... That's the other film we're talking about. The Redwood Massacre. <laughs> yes. Let's go back to that. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. So. so- Oh, go ahead. <laughs> so uh, when you're talking about how you wanted to kind of check all the horror boxes for Redwood Massacre, what in your mind are are the like quintessential horror check boxes? <laughs> you know this inside out. So it's kind of like what I was saying. So, yeah. So everyone was against us, even up to the when we were talking, to, once we completed the movie, the distributor was like, your slasher films don't sell, blah, blah, blah. But I like we watch a lot of horror movies, and we knew that certain types of things in a horror movie will attract a certain type of fan. Am I speaking? No, no, you're it's right. Like, no, it's like so. Your, your tip, your your. We went down the route of, and you you said this from the start. Is like our bad guy has to be big and imposing, and with a cool mask, which I know that you guys. But we'll come on to that. I'm so sure. cool. Yeah, we'll um, come around to that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then it's like, well, it's like uh, the guy that we. Uh, have Benjamin Salway that plays the evil character. He like was a guy that we'd worked with previously. Like we've had done a few things with him, short films. And David is like, we have to get Ben in to do this to to be that character. And he puts on. He's the biggest, most timid, lovely guy you could imagine. <laughs> uh, he's, he actually has a point where he did, when he was when he was grabbing some of the girls and that he's like, I don't want to to hurt them. And he's really worried and everything. But when he puts that mask on. He then he starts doing the whole breathing thing and everything. So we knew that we we had a guy to play that character. And then the other thing is gore. Like if you like too many films, too many horror films now are like downgraded to be like a PG thirteen. Yeah. Um, yeah. And now it's we were like, but we have to go in there and do the gore. And and um, Lorraine, the executive producer, um, and I did the gore for this film. And it was like we knew we had to get like sausages and like meat and like <laughs> things and like just the, the amount of fake blood we had was, it was like a hundred or a thousand pints or something. It was yeah. it, it's an insane amount of fake blood. And <laughs> obviously and obviously we didn't have any known actors, so the blood had to be hopefully the selling point for the movie. You know, I think people can forgive bad acting in horror movies. If as there's long enough as, blood. Yeah, if you deliver <laughs> on the horror. Well that's what we hope for in a way. <laughs> Well, I think that's true. Yeah. I mean, I thought the acting was just fine. I mean, uh, uh, David, you and I had a little back and forth on uh, the character of, of uh, Christy. Um, she was spot. <laughs> she made me hate that character so much immediately. <laughs> I mean, that, and that's a big thing because, um, like you mentioned, the 80s, that's you know where mm-hmm. we kind of compare all these films to because yeah. that's kind of where the big masked guy was born. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, it 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 also had you have that one character who you're like that's the one who's going to live, but in the 80s it was easy because within the first 15 minutes of most 80s films everyone has their tits out and in bikinis except for the one who's going to live. Yeah, and you're that's like true. Oh, she's the survivor, and then they always have that one that you're looking at and you're like oh please be first. <laughs> Please I, listened, I listened to your podcast. Uh, Jim. I was like, I was so like loving the fact that when you said like when she when uh, Kirsty Kirsty um, when yeah. she got okay. killed, when Kirsty got killed, you were like, you felt good. You were like, and I, you felt almost guilty for it. You're like, finally, at one point you were thinking to yourself. You, you said it in your podcast. It's like she might live. You know, you were like, oh yes. no. <laughs> So, and you know, didn't we at one point even like yes, we thought, yeah, yeah. wouldn't it be funny if she was the one that lived? Yeah. But then so, we we're like, maybe that's taking it too far. <laughs> uh, we we're like, we we're like, we know one day Jim's going to watch this, so <laughs> let's make sure. Oh <laughs> uh, well, the editing of that scene in the in uh, under the barn. I mean that that was one of it. I mean it worked. It, it that's what made me question. Well, remember, yeah, remember. well, to be fair, what happened was we were making we st- so David and I came up with this idea with our friend Alistair Cook, and we had this I- had this idea for Attack of the Herbals, just the last one that we made, and we were like halfway through shooting it. Like David and I made a lot of short films, <clears throat> we're halfway through shooting it, and we were lost, 
and David's wife came in, or wife to like at the time she wasn't even she was just your girlfriend. We, remember, we'd go out and shoot one scene yeah. in an entire day. Yeah, it's like so. <laughs> so yeah. Lorraine came in. She was like, we were halfway through doing herbals, and Lorraine was like, we were stuck. And Lorraine was like, you need a plan. And she came in and she became the producer. She was just like, boom, 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 boom. Here's your shot list. And we were like, that's like three scenes. Like, how are we going to do that? <laughs> and she completely took control of that film and got out there. And since then, she's taken over that reins. She's, she's now our executive producer on everything. And she she produces the hell out of these films. She's the one that's on the, on the ground basically going, right, that, 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 that. Essentially, I've become uh, Lorraine's bitch. <laughs> like, like and I thought, it's nothing bad, but she's like, Liam, I need you to fix this. And I'm like, okay, I'm on it. And I'll, yeah. I need you to drive here. I need you to do this, do this, do this. <laughs> but it's perfect. It works for the film. He has to make the movie. Um, whereas I have to then sort of keep that things. I have to keep everything that, that works, everything in the background running. Mm-hmm. So David can keep the film going. Yeah. And Lorraine is the key behind the whole thing. Lorraine is the one that goes, you know what? That's the direction we're going. We're going that way. We're going that way. And everything that we need to fit in there, we'll do it. So, yeah. See, Lorraine loves doing timetabling and all that kind of yeah. stuff. So it's the, <laughs> it wasn't really until someone gave me a timetable or a shooting schedule where you realize, wow, it does make a difference. And, yeah. spe- and once you start getting money from other people to make movies, Oh, then you really yeah. do understand because they give you such short amount of time to make <laughs> direct <laughs> DVD movies. Yeah, right. I think so, one of the things one of the things David's you always ask when we're on set now is you say how are we doing for time, and like you always ask that that to Lorraine. And Lorraine's like, yeah, we're doing okay. We're, we're yeah, on set. And, and a lot of the time she's just lying though. <laughs> <laughs> In the last movie, we had so much time constraints. And then after I finished a scene, she's like, thank God you did it because I lied. You only had like 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. We did an interview with Failure Boys uh, Productions, and they created uh, Attack of the Taddy Bogle. And, and you mentioned that a few times. Yeah. They, they said the same exact thing. They were wa- literally standing in the middle of the woods, wandering around, trying to get it done. And then the uh, 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 Peter, Chris, oh no, was yeah. it Peter or Chris's? One of the uh, Peter's wife yeah. showed up with a spreadsheet. And they were yeah. like, whoa. And they're like, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> we That's would have never exactly thought of this. Happened. Yeah. We would still be filming the first movie. Yeah, we'd still be doing <laughs> We'd have the biggest movie ever. We'd have more shoot footage than the Avengers or the Marvel movies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Boy, the power of a spreadsheet. Well, I think that's yeah. an, an important lesson is that you need somebody organized on your on your crew. Yes. It's, yeah. Things moving. Because yeah. obviously when you start making films, it's all about the, I'll use, what's it called? The, the creative part yeah. where you don't necessarily think once you go into the business side where someone is actually there saying you've only got a day to do this you know you need that experience of someone telling you what to do really yeah, yeah. <laughs> what let's talk about this mask <laughs> uh well because props for making practical effects all yourself, which was fun for me because growing up, you remember uh, back in the mid seventies, they started coming out magazines like Fangoria and Fangoria. movie horror, uh, you know, SFX magazines, special effects. I loved that. And when like Halloween and Friday the 13th hit, they had no end of material. I was all over that. <laughs> Ooh, Fang- Fangoria had like all the amazing masks in it. Yes. You know, yeah. Oh my God. Last going, I was like, but they were nowhere near the quality they are today. Is it still going no. fun? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> <clears throat> well, I, you know, I think one of the things that is just, and we've talked about it a lot in over the course of the past couple hours, but uh, just the the character of the killer and the Redwood Massacre is really what sells the movie. It's what holds it all together, and it's you know he does a wonderful job and it just actually made me think of as a kid when i would go like trick-or-treating for halloween there was always this really old victorian house on the on the corner and a lot of kids would skip it they wouldn't go up to the door um well but i noticed (laughs) 
that kids who did go up to the door came out with like a bag of chips and like a full size candy bar. I was gonna say like a full like set, yeah. So I was like, <laughs> why are all these kids skipping this house? And I went up and it was every year the guy who lived in that house dressed up as Freddy Krueger and he was like really good. <laughs> <clears throat> he was super scary. Mm. That's that's the funny thing though, is like as well, sorry, just just jumping in. Like, um, I almost feel like if we were to give Ben the Freddy Krueger mask, he would become Freddy Krueger. <laughs> you know, like, uh, like, like for uh, real? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like he would he would he would become he would like he would like because Ben is like that kind of guy who's like you say like you speak to him, he's so timid, he's so quiet. But like I feel like if uh, if he was given the Freddy Krueger mask, I almost feel like he would just transform. As soon as he got a mask on, he would transform into that character. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like you know, it's kind of like a weird thing. It's like you're talking about like the, like um, the Red Mask is is based around this character and this evil character and this thing. thing and like, and you're right. It's like the second half of the film essentially follows him around. Mm-hmm. He's, he's so like he's like on the screen. He's he like brings in this like he like this personality to himself, even though he doesn't say a word. Yes, he's like even the point. I, you guys brought up. I think it was you guys very much picked up on the point that it was a penis that was in the jar. Yes, penis in a jar. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, it was. It was. It was bad. Sculpted. Um, but the funny thing is, as well, is like like there's a really that's like my favorite shot of the whole film, though. It's like when he's holding the jar out, like Ben's in the background, the, the evil guy's in the back. And you don't see him. You don't you don't notice he's there until he walks away. Yep. But it's like yeah. almost like he's like he's like taunting uh Bruce. He's sitting there, Bruce is sitting there going holding it, and then he just standing there and he walks away, it walks out of shot, and you don't see him until he starts moving. And you're like, Holy shit, he's actually there. You know, it's like yes. it's one of the <laughs> one of the like the, the coolest shots in the film. It's like but you know, going back to the 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 guys behind the mask, if you look back even at Halloween and Friday the thirteenth, they weren't actors. They were just they were like stunt guys. Yeah, right. Or the the guy in Halloween. I think there's something that well, maybe for Ben anyway, hiding behind the mask. Yeah, they're phases. not they're not they're not guys who are on camera. They're guys who are used to not being on camera. Mm-hmm. And I think that, like if we if we put a if we pointed a camera at Ben right now, yeah, he'd be like, he would be like, "I don't like this. It's yeah. not. It's not for me." You know. Whereas <laughs> if you put the mask on him, he'd be like, he would just he would sit here moving his shoulders. You know, I mean, he'd totally buy up on it. Like, like, the, if you think the only horror icons that have been done, maybe Robert England and the guy that played Pinhead. Well, I was going to say, but they're the ones who speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's like, what I mean. So, yeah, 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 like right. So like you've got you've got two two different kind of kind kind of guys. I guess I. Hope- 